Alliance versus 2011 international champions, Navi. And we're back for game three of the international 2013 grand finals Alliance between Navi and the Alliance. We're all tied up. What was once a best of five is now a best of three. It all comes down to this. Your winner takes home $1.4 million and counting the loser, only 600000 And I say only, but that's still a lot of money. And for the first time in this Best of Five series, we're going to see Lone Druid being piloted by Admiral Bulldog, often known as one of his, if not the best hero for him. He has kind of played thousands and thousands of this game Th in this pub. This is the hero that he's made a name for himself yes. on. And, you know, it's a really cool storyline because Ten actually seconds. Admiral Bulldog was discovered by Navi and yes. specifically by Dendi. Yeah. His like first competitive three. experience filling in as a stand-in for Navi. Now, the apprentice tries to become the master. I mean, I think Navi's uh, Navi kicking themselves. Like, why did we play with this guy? Why is this guy now on the other side of the booth? And threatening to do a lot, but going back to what we heard from the analysts, it wasn't the Batrider that Navi had big successes with, no re disrespect to Dendi at all, but Kuroki with his gangs, with his relocates, Dendi the fact that he was just putting on so much pressure against the line. So let's see if with Wisp, whether they could do the same thing. Yeah, I, again, I, I think obviously you probably don't want to give away all those heroes in general, but it was more the way they played the heroes, not the heroes themselves. A lot of early pressure, Alliance didn't expect it, caught off guard, and once Navi had a good start, game was over because Alliance just had very little in the way of comeback mechanics. So going into game two, we'll see the S4 Batrider, the lone druid for Admiral Bulldog. It's still a draft that Alliance would normally love to get. They have given away a Wisp, an EO. They have given away an Alchemist to Havost, but I mean, their lineup a lot more stable and solid in the laning stage already. Yeah, they got to get some answer to that Batrider. Normally, there aren't Alliances many, and that's, that's really the issue. S-Force Batrider have a 76% win rate, and obviously Alliance wins quite a bit, so I'm not sure how much that statistic means, but his play on Batrider is just absolutely marvelous. It's he puts so much pressure on your carry. He puts so much pressure on your support. It's hard to stop a hero win. like Batrider, especially if s is piloting it. Yeah, now one of the better heroes Five against Batrider in the mid lane win. is Puck. Are we going to see a Dendi Puck this game? We could be. I mean, Puck is definitely one of his uh, best heroes. Time. We've seen him pilot it all the way back in TY1 and TI1 and definitely well before that as well. He knows that hero quite well. And of course, oh. it's... Oh, never mind. I like these bands from the Lions. No more, funny, no more funny Bounty Hunter. No more Dendi Puck. You're yeah. going to have to pull something new. And now both junglers have been removed. And Na'Vi are going to snap up this. Alliances. Yeah, some are surprised that they have not gone for the... Uh, Obsidian Devourer, it's a... It's the, a hero the Outworld Devourer. Yeah, yeah. Outworld Devourer. As what, man of many names. Man of many names, indeed. OD does match up against Batrider quite well. It's his orbs and his magical damage does quite well against Lone Druid, so I was fairly certain that we're going to see that particular hero, but so far, nothing just yet. Yeah, it's still available, and Alliance already having Bat. I mean, when you play Alliance, Bulldog has played Batrider, but they already have Ten Lone Druid. So he's going to play Lone Druid. It means that you don't have to pick up the OD now. You can wait on it. You can get it with Five the fourth pick here. Remaining. There's no more bands coming for Navi before, uh, for Alliance before that, and they're not going to go for it because they already have their mid, they Reserve already have their time. off laner. So I like this from Navi. If they want it, they can get it later. I'm still expecting a Space Cow. I'm still expecting a Spirit Breaker. I called it once. It wasn't here. I'm still going to keep on calling it because this is a hero that they have practiced, and uh, they want to bring it up. I want to see them bringing it up. Yeah, Spirit Breaker is a support that does the damage of a carry in the late 8 stage. He hits like a truck. He's very hard to kill. He's pretty nice against Relocate, right? Because he's got high base armor. He's very tanky with his HP pool. Not an easy kill. Yeah. But it's a very unconventional pit. It definitely is. The, the common ones would be, well, there's no Naga, but there is still a Windrunner. That's on the EGM plays a lot. Keeper Light's been banned out. What's Ake going to play this? I think that's my big question. What is Ake going to play this game? No Keeper of the Light, no Jungle Heroes. What's plan B? No Naga Siren either, which is like, yeah, yeah. no Naga. So, just Spirit Breaker is my answer because that's all you got. I mean, there's Rubik, obviously, that's a, that's a hero that he plays quite well. Shadow Demon's not too bad either. These are the, the more of a standard fair. If they want to go a little bit more AoE based, Jakiro's not bad. But those are boring. We've seen those before. Yeah, and if you're up against Wisp, there's some common supports that you can turn to. Shadow Demon's great against Relocate Gank. Disruptor can be very potent against them. 
and yeah. uh, no, they'll go Murata. Yeah. So right. they throw out the book. Nothing they'll go with something new. Actually, actually, we have seen this before from Loda. When the last time they ran Murata, yes. they did an aggressive trying Murana, Shadow Demon, plus Enchantress. Enchantress didn't even show up. They yeah. didn't even need him. It was just a dual lane. Yeah, they, they use it against Weaver, who normally very, very difficult to kill in lane. But you open up with Disrupt, and then you line up the arrow such that the arrow land when they come out of Disruption. A ton of damage output from these spells, from your right clicks, and definitely from the SD Disruption Illusions as well. So let's see if they're going to follow up here with a Shadow Demon pickup. So in a traditional Dota team, your mid player is normally the two role. He's sort of your semi-carry, your ganker in the mid game. Uh, the safe lane farmer is normally the carry. But this game, we may see Loda as sort of that utility off laner role, where he's not getting too much farm, maybe your secondary damage dealer, but it might just be Bulldog who ends up being the hard carry for lines, and that's really where their versatility lies. They can put Bulldog in the safe lane 1v1, and he'll beat most most players 1v1 with his own Druid. I'll be hard pressed to see Navi taking 1v1. So, uh, Alliance looks like an aggressive trial lane from them. Generally, if you don't want to go aggressive, there's better heroes than Mirana. So, let's see where they go. Again, if you go aggressive trialing with that Shadow Demon Mirana kind of kind of combo, again, what what is really your support? If you go at Shadow Demon as a early game laner support, he doesn't in the mid game doesn't do too much. Now, with that said, Demonic Purge is also very very good against Alchemist. So. We'll see exactly what Alliance is up to. Meanwhile, for Navi's side, what are we predicting here, especially for Funic, especially for Dendi, because those heroes have not been drafted so far. Yeah, for Funic, his three big heroes have been Darkseer, Bounty Hunter, and uh, I would say Windrunner. Uh, yep. We used yep. to see him play a lot of Clinks in the safe lane role, but they don't have the kind of draft for that. So I don't expect to see a Clinks this game. That would be really greedy against Alliance. Doesn't match up that great against Lone Druid, especially not against Bulldog. So uh, for Navi, I'm thinking something like the Windrunner farming the Ancients as that utility offlaner. Dendi's hero still to be determined this game. We've seen a lot of quad from him. No. Early Razor. It's going to be a Razor. So what do you make of this? Yeah, Razor definitely an okay, pick, or actually very decent pick against Lone Druid. If he's sieging your base, for example, and you have some sort of dot on him, he cannot recall it back. And that's when Static Link could just drain every bit of damage from that barrier. And that, that also means Razor is going to have a huge impact in the mid game. But it really predicates on the fact that you do get the damage drain off. Because if you don't, Razor is not really that insane of a, a damaging hero Ten in the mid game. Seconds. Yeah, and it's, uh, we normally see Dendi on the very aggressive tempo controllers, Five gankers, snowball mm -hmm. heroes. Razor is a snowball hero, but he doesn't have the catch up potential of some of other, uh, some of Dendi's other heroes. Oh. Here comes oh, the man. Lion. And oh, look at me, I got to remind you, they're on the dire side here. The Ogre Magi is running through the crowd right now. They're going wild. They, they are. Hopefully they don't separate a costume. But Ogre Magi Alliance in the past have selected. Round two. There we go. <laughs> what a costume. Uh, Unbelievable. In the past, Alliance have selected this kind of uh, support heroes. He doesn't do too much in the laning stage. He doesn't give you too much in a team fight. But uniquely, he gives you no other, really no other support hero can do is buff up your carries like no other. Attack speed, movement speed, and for especially for that long drip bear, it is very, very, very scary. Yeah, Bloodlust is one of the best support uh, abilities in the game for making a carry stronger. Up there with it, power, perhaps even stronger. Ten Attack seconds. speed and move speed, two of the most important uh, attributes to have more of in the game. Now the band's coming out. The Dendi Quap is now removed. So it looks like they actually expect Funic to maybe be playing this Razor. Uh, it could be an offlane Quap, I suppose. I mean, in a 1v1 matchup against the bear, you just walk up to the bear and link his damage. What does the bear actually do? In yeah. fact, if it's a, it, if Navi has predicted the lanes the way that they have seen it and, and matches up Razor against Lone Druid, I could see that actually working quite well for the Razor. If you're Alliance, uh, we have seen some other teams, I think Orange Esports, the most notable, where KYXY will take his Lone Druid mid. I have not seen yeah. Alliance do that before. It is something they could pull out if they want to rejigger the lanes. Three. But now it's time for our final picks, and then we hop into game three. Yeah. Winner, winner of this game is one win away from $1.4 million. Alliances. Okay, so we have Rookie Rubik, Visage, and Rubik. Is this a Dendi Rubik? Dendi Rubik? Yeah. Is it back? I d is it back? I mean, Dendi solo mid wisp is also a thing. Yeah, uh, actually, Dendi has been asking to get that solo mid wisp from what I've heard from other players. So then we're gonna see a solo mid wisp. Potential solo mid wisp. Potential solo mid Rubik. Something different is coming from Navi. If you think about it, solo mid wisp. Actually, not bad against uh, Batrider, but we'll talk about that later. Later, as we see Lena Inverse being selected here. So 
this offensive trialing is looking damn scary. You open with a fire blast, you follow up with like strike array, you follow that up with a sacred arrow, and suddenly that person is dead. I mean, Alliance, you look at this draft, and they've got great lanes. Lots of burst damage, a very strong soul in the Lone Druid, and the S4 bat. It's a pretty classic Alliance draft when they do go aggressive trialing. But Na'Vi have a lot of heroes that feel like they could just counter what Alliance is throwing their way. So now, Lumi, it's about time to get into game three. Winner of this, one win away from taking home the Aegis of the Immortal. And they're probably going to get a lot of Aegis this game as well. Hopefully we're not going to see a 16-minute route this game. We're going to see something, a closer game, just echoing what uh, the sentiments of our analysts outside. Yeah, we've talked a lot about level 1 Roche, so I do want to say this is not a great level 1 Roche lineup. They can't really do it. They got Light Striker in. It's going to take forever. They got, they got this is not a level 1 Roche lineup, right, so Na'Vi okay. don't have to worry about that. All right, let's see who is actually playing what here. On the Na'Vi side, three-time finalist Kuroki will be playing your support. Rubik Dendi has swapped back to his Wisp. And is he going solo mid? We'll have to see. Funnick is going to be on Razor. Havos 4 on Alchemist. And last but not least, Puppy, the drafter, your support player on the Visage. On the side of Team Alliance, let yet to drop a set at the International 3. They lost a game, but this happened to them before, and then they took down DK. Can they do it again? Can they shut the door on Na'Vi? We'll start to answer that question now. Alliance, EGM, your four position Lina, Ake, the five position Ogre Magi, Loda, normally the hard carry, on the semi carry the Murata. Bulldog will be going mid as the Lone Druid, and that puts S4 in the safe lane on the Batrider. So already, it looks like Alliance expecting Na'Vi to do something weird, and they will be right about that, in seconds. fact. So these lanes now, I think, looking pretty good for the Alliance, actually. Yeah, I mean, there's just mind games all over the place. What Na'Vi wanted to do is get a Wisp Batrider matchup on the mid lane, because it's actually somewhat difficult for a Bat to get the kill. You can always tether away to a Creep Wave that's coming to you, and then run away from the Bat. Now, instead, he's going to get a Wisp Lone Druid matchup. And of course, Lone Druid has a ton of early game harassment power, especially coming from that Spirit Bear. And if you look at that Wisp, zero armor. He is going to be taking a ton of early game harassment. Arrow to fly. Kuroki calmly dodges it. And from haste. the high ground, nice. Puppy denies the haste. Smooth and polished teamwork from Na'Vi. Alliance now will make a foray into the enemy jungle. They're going to wrap around. Uh, you're up against the solo mid Wisp. Generally, you want to ward block the, the, mid, the uh, small camp. But right now, Alliance not doing so, so Dendi early access to a whole lot of stacks. Here we go. The creeps have spawned. The players approach their lanes. What are we looking at? I mean, we're looking at Dendi not really having a good time. How, how does this guy win this lane? I mean, he has 50 base damage. He gets level 6. That's how Dendi wins this lane. I suppose. Don't die. Get level 6. You're not going to outfarm Admiral Bulldog unless he gets a gank supporting him. He's probably not going to find a kill, but then they've got the mid game to fall back on. So the other matchup will be the Funic Razor against S4's bat. S4 starting with the Reign of Protection, not rusting the boots early on. So far, both teams passive, but that could all change in a heartbeat. I mean, for Navi, they just want to keep it a passive because if they ever make a go on this Alliance offensive trial lane, it's going to be tough to find those kills. Loda with a Sacred Arrow right now, but most likely going to take Leap in level 2, and he's really the only person you're going to be able to initiate on. Both supports are staying rather far back. Yeah, if you don't catch Kuroki, then he can disrupt your follow-up. So let's say they arrow Puppy or Havos. Then when you come in to throw a Light Strike Array, simply Kuroki just lifts you. We'll nice. see if it works, though. There's a Light Strike Array. No follow-up yet. Now pulling an EGM, throwing him directly back down. Both teams a bit tentative here. So far, mid lane looking good for Dendi. Two and two already. Very impressive against Denad, the Admiral Bulldog going through it. He is slightly ahead in CS, but that's to be expected. Early on, blows being traded. But still, nobody really committing. The off lane, Razor 3 and 0. S4 winning this lane pretty handily. Actually, Dendi on the mid lane is doing quite an admirable yeah, job really against is. Bulldog because if you see the Wisp uh, Spirits, he's doing a ton of damage and he could actually get a bottle. Now, Admiral Bulldog definitely would not have the bottle crow option. So you can see Dendi, he's trying to cancel that south, trying to extend it, trying to get it. Nice cute backer by Bulldog. Yeah. Can't do it. It is worth mentioning, you talked about the zero base armor for Dendi. If he overextends and takes like one tower shot, that's probably a quarter of his HP. There's a regen rune top, though. Dendi is oh. about to be very, very happy. Now, generally, Lumi, when you're a mid-lone druid, you use your bear to deny the enemy solo runes. But Bulldog, he's using it to last hit, and he's too late. So Dendi, he gets a great rune. And now the lane really going well for him. Yeah, Dendi, surprisingly. I mean, he's 2-5, and five, Bulldog 6-7, and seven, but that's to be expected, like, honestly. 
This is good for Dendi. Well, I mean, those deny is going to hurt him a little bit in terms of heading level six. This is a lane that we haven't talked about too much. Look at let's look at top here. As Funic is on that Razor and S4 is on the bat. I, I gotta say, this is a fairly bad favor matchup. Yeah, Funic. Uh, when you look at Razor, he's all about draining the enemy carry's damage. But there he goes. The the sticky napalm allows you to disengage. Generally, he's actually going to lose quite a bit here. And he will be driven back for oh, now. Actually. Funic giving chase. Really committing to this. We'll tank the creep wave. We'll back off. I'm so far surprised that S4 has not skilled Firefly and used it when the uh, chase comes. Because you could just Firefly and fly over. And what is... I mean, Funic's not going to chase you through the flames, right? Yeah, holding onto his abilities here. Maybe wants a flame break to, to go for an early kill. Take one in flame break, then one in Firefly. Uh, if you get in range, you can run him down. There's no mobility skills on the Razor, aside from his passive. Now he's going in again. S4 driven back. Being lashed by the whip of the Razor. Funic... Starting to come back in this lane a little bit. It was hard at first, but now he's zoning out the bat. Still no bottle forthcoming. Both teams very passive on the bottom lane. And if they're passive on this bottom lane, I got to say that really favors Navi. Yeah, it does. Because once level 6 is going to happen, we're going to see Kuroki most likely... Not Kuroki. Dendi, because Kuroki generally plays the Wisp. But Kuroki most likely making a relocate. Maybe even walks top, relocates the Razor bot, and suddenly you have 5-man team fight for a Navi on the bot lane. And then you can bring the Razor back to top lane, so he wastes minimal time. Relocate such a potent ability. Dendi, already level 4, close to 5. Bulldog leading in terms of experience. You'll notice this time around, sends the bear, checks the top rune. Now it's an invis, and it goes bottom. So they'll get that rune. And the denies that you mentioned are really important here. Like, every deny, Wisp is a ranged hero. It delays the level 6. But as you also stated, once he hits 6, this trialing could really fall apart for the Alliance. They're all level 2, and a level 6 Wisp can just absolutely dominate supports. Yeah, uh, at the same time, Dendi's got to be somewhat careful when he relocates in because there's a, nothing but burst damage on this Alliance trialing. So we have Ar Arrow, Fire Blast, uh, Bloodless, interesting second level of, uh, from Aki. Of course, EGM has two nukes on his zone, so if he comes in and he missteps a bit, he could just get blown up. Yeah, Bloodlust is really nice early on because auto attacks are pretty important and I mean, it's such a great chase ability. We'll see if he levels it up. It synergizes great with the bear, and when you're support Ogre, levels are at a premium. He's not a great Flash Farmer. He's in the offlane. So going for early Bloodlust, he might not get to level up both of his, his other skills until much later on. I actually think this is a great build, and uh, it could really accelerate their push and their Roshan attempts if they go for them later on. Dendi coming on the mid lane here, using those spirits, harassing away at Bulldog. Bulldog dropping to about... Is he actually going for the kill? He really can't, but good harass. 19 and 12. Dendi, though, really holding his own. 14 and 8. And he's been saying that Wisp is underrated as a solo mid. I did cast him playing this once. It was not against the Alliance. It was against sort of what we would call a tier 2 or tier 3 team. He crushed. We'll have to see if he can crush them, though. They're going to be a much stauncher opponent here. Well, level 6 is coming quite soon. I mean, generally the timing for a level 6 on the mid lane is around this, although the harass... Oh, oh the root comes here. No tether. Dendi's in trouble. He's got nowhere to run. He's going to be the first blood. The bulldog root does it. And now, Alliance in a commanding position. When you have no base armor and when he gets a lucky root on you like Meanwhile, that. top lane, S4, preppy with the firefly, but with the damage stolen, does he look to go? He's got a bottle charge here. No, he'll back off. Yeah, he, he can make plays like these, and if it doesn't work out, he has a very safe escape because of Firefly. Not once Dendi's level 6, though. Not once he's level 6, you make that play, you might just die. Back in mid lane here, Spirits of Ball are coming in against Bulldog. Trying to get the root. If he get, gets a root, he could get the kill. There's always a tether for Dendi. The next creep wave's coming. I mean, that situation mid for Bulldog was very unique, right? Because he got the root right after the creep wave was there, and Dendi was next to it. So there was no ally to tether to. It's not a dual lane mid, and there was no creeps to run away from. Sure, you can tether to them, but they're right next to you. You're not getting away. So this time around with full mana, with bottle charges, Bulldog can maybe zone him out, but getting a kill will be a bit tougher. Yeah, we're talking about Dendi leaving his lanes when he gets level 6 for a relocate. Gangs is making it happen right now on the bot lane. Kuroki, there's a leap. They want Aki first. Toss him back. One man stand against Loda. Loda dropping low. They're going to focus him down. That's two kill going to Na'Vi. We expected the rotation. Here it comes, and Dendi strikes fast and hard. Yeah, solo mid wisp, lose your lane, gank the other lane. That's the power of this hero. Straight back to mid, back to farming. Bulldog going for early phase boots on his bear. He loves to rush Midas, but this game, he's not doing it. Back when Armlet was something that really worked well in Lone Druid, we saw him always go for it. But phase into boots, in the safe lane, it's almost always the Midas into Radiance. So Bulldog is making an interesting adjustment to his item build. Not too bad in this game. Again, Wisp is a very, very squishy hero in the early game. So if you kind of hit him a couple of times in lane eat with your face boot barrier, that's going to do it. But I really want to point out that normal other solo mid heroes, when they want make a gank to other lanes, 
it takes a long time. You know, you walk there, you make the gank, you walk back or you TP back. By that time, the creep wave is working your tower. There's a barrier on your tower. But because you can relocate, spend 10 seconds there, and then you're instantly back, I mean, the creep wave never even got to his tower. So Dendi protecting his tower while putting up pressure uh, on the other side of the map. That's a huge deal. Yeah, the other nice thing is not only does he get the kills, but he drives Alliance off of the offensive tri lane. Havost has a point in Greebles Greed. It's not a Greebles Greed max. Now funny. they're going to mid. Tether's there. They're stealing Bulldog's damage already in the big bear form. He's tanky, but is he tanky enough? Funnick taking a lot of damage, but Bulldog more thrown from high ground to low ground. Now the chase is on. Funnick dropping fast. S4 chasing. Tether, Tether's speed. there. He's too hard to kill. They oh can't bring him down. Alliance getting outmaneuvered at every corner. The bottom lane in disarray, driven off of that. Now Bulldog falls mid, not rushing Omidas. Nobody's really farming that well. Loda not on a hard carry. They don't have the best split push lineup. This game, Alliance, they at pretty much every game, they start ahead and they stay ahead. That's not the case here. Relocate on the back line. EGM trying to protect itself. Tether and the EGM's gonna go down. Kuroki will pick up that one. And Navi, very similar to game two, are rolling hard right now. The Alliance yet to drop a set at the International 3, yet they didn't drop a game in the group stage, but here, 4-1, to one, trailing already by 1,500 gold, 1,500 experience, Alliance has to feel like they're on the back foot. Now Loda farming top lane, Dendi relocates down, but that doesn't stop him from going to play some aggressive wards. And this is a cute thing you can do with Wisp, is hey, if you get ganked, you've always got Tether to get out, so not an easy hero to shut down. And as, as a highly leveled Wisp, not an easy kill. So Dendi, he's transitioning. Not that semi-carry role, he's going to show an additional form here. Mm -hmm. Also, very interesting skill build coming out from our Razor player, Funnick. He's gone. Generally, you, you definitely pick up your ultimate as it's a huge early game damage. But he's, he's just maxing his nuke. He's, you know, static link is his second priority. Very interesting. Yeah, the nuke's just some nice burst damage, and it synergizes very well with these other supports, which are all about instantly blowing someone up. You look at a, an Alchemist, that's his goal. It's similar for Dendi, the orbs do an absolute metric ton of damage. So when you max the Brazer nuke, if it hits you at max range, it does extra damage. You can see there, 370. It really adds up. Well, I think they're going to try to set up a play here on the mid lane. A little bit of a tether movement speed being granted to Kuroki. By the way, Relocate is going to be back up in about five seconds. As far as got to be very cautious. If he overextends even slightly and they get a tether stun and a lift, he'll be dead to the follow-up. Here we go. Bot. He's overextended, perhaps. Firefly's there, heading already to the tree line. S4 <laughs> juking away. They can't really do much to him here. Havos self-stunning. S4 maybe going back in. He could grab Havos. Not just yet. Waiting for Dendi to go back. Dendi's gone. And now S4. He can't go in. But Batrider, great defensive movement by S4 dodging the game. How is that fair? You just go, go off the map. They can't even kill you. Yeah, that's actually off the map. Like, yeah. if you're not Firefly, you can't go there. Nothing. Nothing will get you there. Firefly, though, it, it knows no boundaries. Well, actually, missing that gank and not having relocate for the next 50 seconds or so is going to be somewhat annoying for Navi because what they want to do right now is keep up pressure and make sure that nobody on the map is uh, farming. You can still load up very confidently, going up uh, forward up top, getting a couple of last hits. Mid lane, they're not really scared too much either because relocate is down. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a setback for Navi, but I feel like the rhythm of this game is a Navi rhythm. Lots of early clashes, the potential for more. Havost farming not having to join the fights but being able to very soon. Alliance, they're so used to playing from being ahead. They're so used to the defensive tri lane, stacking the neutrals, stacking the ancients, Bulldog catching up on profit, Bulldog going for an early Midas on Lone Druid, S4 getting a very fast tempo controlling item like a blink. They're not getting those items. It's just a game pace and a style that they're not accustomed to being in. They'll really have to show some versatility here because this is not their comfort zone. Yeah, Navi definitely has shown that versatility. That's why they're always deep in those tournament running and that's why they're still here fighting on against Alliance, despite Alliance having a great run to tournament so far. So now, I mean, the clock's starting to tick. You're seeing big items come out. There's a Shadow Blade for Havos. There's an Urn for your Wisp for Dendi. And that next level of aggression, the second wave, it's going to be a lot scarier. Here we go. It's going to come soon. Don't be surprised if Havos TP's in. He can farm. He's going back to a Greevil's Greed Max, but we know Havos, man. He wants to fight. I really like the way that Alliance is playing so far right now. They know Relocate's up. They got to respect the ganking power of that Relocate. But look at the player's position. You have your supports just hiding behind the mid tower, hiding behind the top tower. They are not going to show themselves on the minimap. They're not going to get picked off. Druid just jungling. He's going to slowly rotate uh, back to the other lanes. And of course, Marana as well as S4 will back up on the mid lane. They could confidently show themselves. So despite having very aggressive hero on Navi's side, S4 and the rest of the team not too scared. Yeah, the problem though is they're 
They're not, I mean, they actually are keeping even in terms of golden experience, but attack. some of these supports are starting to feel a bit underleveled. EGM only level 4, you look at Kuroki, he's already level 6 Dyer's on his Rubik. Navi just getting ahead in terms of experience Dyer's on these supports, and that's a big attack. problem. Wisp, all about burst, if supports are squishy, they just melt. They also melt to out, and here comes your push bottom lane. Navi looking not only for the first blood, but now for the first tower of the game. No defense mounted by the Alliance. A bit lacking on counter push, to be honest, Lumi. Dyer's All they've really got is the, nu the loot attack. nukes from Lena, and the first tower of game three will go to Navi. 13 minutes in, Dendi with the last Dyer's hit. Yeah, great play here by Navi, striking something, getting something off the map, because if you look at the experience graph for the past two minutes, it's all Alliance Advantage. Nothing is happening. Radiant's They're a lot more efficient in jungle. They're attack. jungling with Amro Bulldog, and now Ake is right next to him, giving him Bloodlust. If this goes on and nothing happens, Alliance will come back. And they're definitely already coming back, so Navi need to get something going. Dendi looking for a relocate. So do you, do you think that Alliance just have this flat-out late game, or does it just come down to execution if it goes late? I feel like there's a ton of chain stun, a ton of tank already on Alliance side. I mean, Sure, Havos is going to be scary, he's going to be big, but a single root, right, a single stun against Havos, he, he can't really lock down. He's a melee carry uh, at the end of the day, so that's going to be a concern. But Navi right now going towards the top lane, trying to get something going, but they are scouted by Observer Ward. Yeah, they're scouted in their rotation to the top lane. They've got familiars here, and it looks like if they want to pressure this tower, they most certainly can. The Blink Dagger on the Batrider for S4, finally about to come out. 14 minutes in, call it a pretty late blink for him, and now Havos juking it out, duking it out with the bear. He'll take a bit of damage. Blink now secured. Navi, all these early to mid game items, Shadow Blades, Power Treads, Phase Boots, Drums, Urn. They want to fight. Will they find that fight? Nero nearly missing on the mid lane here. I think they will find the fight because S4 just picked up on his Blink Dagger. He's going to be looking to play very aggressive, maybe defend his tower or something. Uh, so, far, so far, Tier 1 tower dropping a little bit up top. Again, I feel like Alliance is very comfortable giving this early game tower. Here comes a Moonlight Shadow. I think they're trying to set up some ganks. Navi, meanwhile, they're heading towards top. Alliance, too, too late in pursuit. They'll back off towards mid. Kuroki is spotted. There's a blink. There's a lasso. He's running. Does he get off the lift? Too late. He's been caught by S4. Now he's dead in an instant. No relocate. Alliance finally getting on the board in the mid game. They'll pick up their second kill. And now the tier one mid. It's going to fall fast. Bulldog getting closer and closer to that relic. 2.2k gold. I'd be shocked if he doesn't go for it. He really likes his farm. Yeah, and, and Relic is going to be an issue because if you look at Navi's side, they have a ton of heroes that are very, very low in terms of health. So I think Alliance right now is fully in the advantage. They got a kill in the mid lane. They have got a tier one tower. And in fact, they sh I mean, in theory, they should be behind. They should be scared. But as they're roaming as four or five, they're not going to get picked off. Not by not by Dendi. I, and you talked about the tankiness of them. Maybe allowing their their tanky lineup just withstanding the ganks. They're also very elusive on these heroes. The blink bat with Firefly. We saw just with Firefly, he can dodge away from relocate ganks. Your Mirana's got leap. Your lone droid's not mobile, but he's very hard to kill. So if the relocate ganks stop. And Radiant's they're not finding them. Havos didn't attack. go Battle Fury. He didn't go Midas. He didn't go for the greedy build or the more farming oriented build, I should say, that we saw last game. So they're not just going to win by out farming their opponents. They're not building for that style. So now they've oriented themselves to fight. They're not finding fights. Alliance are feeling more comfortable. Yeah, but now yeah. Navi putting on pressure mid. Tier 1 Tower Siege on mid, but I guess S4, he's, he's got his flaming last one. I got Loda. a couple seconds. Oh, flies the arrow and lands on Funnick. Too far away, though, is this team. They can't engage. But that was a nice arrow. Here comes your bear. If it gets a root, they might jump. No, not yet. This, this bear is already really scary. He's got no item aside from face boot on top. But with Bloodlust, he's running very fast. He's attacking very fast. Yeah, in theory, you talked about it, how Razor is a counter to Lone Druid. But that's assuming that Funny can withstand the damage that comes out from Alliance. And to be honest, if he runs in with no BKB, he's in a lot of trouble. The bear starting to take some chip damage. Funny low. Arrow to fly. Hits. What a snipe. But is there follow-up S4 looking to leap? Not going yet. Tower's low. Oh, Familiar stun. Deny. It gets denied by the Bulldog. Now Havos fishing for a stun. He's about to self-stun. Alliance, though, not going yet. Alota's just sniping them all over the place. Again, I mean, that deny was absolutely huge. Navi spent five members on the mid lane, 
And uh, they're now going back. They don't have too much to farm. If you look at the creep wave, there's a huge wave up top, so Alliance is going to clear that up. Uh, in fact, you see Navi farming the jungle as five members. They are definitely falling behind in terms of goal and experience, and they will not keep up with Alliance. They, they don't have an answer for that lone druid once he gets a Radiance. Yeah, and, you and you're talking about the gold, and it is going Navi's way, but you got to keep in mind that they have one, two, three towers down. Alliance only have one. So once Alliance, if they win a fight and they get two towers, they maybe get a Roche. That gold graph that looks like it's Navi's favor will instantly go the other direction. Oh, Here we go. Leap on Hobos, trapped in the jungle. Sentry wants prep. They found him, but Dendi wants to bring him home. No, not relocating yet. Turning around, throwing out the stun. It's a trap, and S4 will fall. Navi were ready. They were prepared. Alliance thought they had him. There was no, even with the Laguna Blade, it just wasn't enough damage. Very, very important counter gank here. And Dendi now have both traveling as a pack there, thinking about relocating. If they see anybody, they will see EGM on the mid tower. Oh, EGM, you thought you were safe. You are never safe from Dendi. Wow, that was a pure anticipation gank. Because you look at it, they have vision now because their heroes are here. This Observer Ward spotted him running back, and they just knew he'd keep on running all the way to the base. Beautiful movement from Navi, leading 6-2, to two, but they got to keep it up. They get the kills, they can't sit back and relax too much. Late game, low Druid, very hard for an Alchemist to deal with until he gets to 6 slot status. He can just man fight the Vare. So the mid game going to be tough. In comes an arrow, hits a creep. Off the mark from Loda, unfortunately. Now the tower falling fast. They'll maybe look for a deny here. They're still defending. Navi are going to back off. So, I, I mean, Alliance, they give up a kill. They're hanging on, though. They are definitely hanging on. Again, it goes back on how the next 5, 10 minutes going to play out. For right now, in, in these last two, three games, Navi's plays out is actually reminding me Quite frankly, of Orange. I mean, if they are getting kills, they're rolling hard, they're getting everything on the map. They're getting enemy camps, they're getting towers. But when they're not getting kills, it doesn't feel like it's the same team. So on that last five, six minutes where they didn't get too much done, we saw Alliance slowly accruing gold, slowly coming back. And when they do get the kill, obviously gate towers. Back in the mid lane, they're trying to gank that bear, but it's elusive. And by the way, that bear has a secret relic, so. Yeah, he's had it for a little bit now. 100 gold up on Bulldog. Radiance is forthcoming. And once the Radiance is there, Na'Vi, they really want to gank, but they'll have to defend against that split push. The tower low, no defense in sight. The tier two mid will fall to Na'Vi. Alliance, they're bending. They haven't, they have not broken yet, and they're just waiting for some items here. Once those items come, though, they'll change their tenor. Yeah, at the same time, you can't be too comfortable if you're Alliance. Sure, Radiant Spear is a, is a big deal, but at the same time, you're Marana right now, not really doing too much damage. Batrider is more or less just a, a kind of a, a great initiation hero. Attack. He doesn't do too much. Uh, doesn't have a Force Staff, for example. Doesn't have a Shiva's Guard. So they are very reliant on Bulldog surviving in these team fight, and that really comes down to how well the Focus Fire is going to come from Navi. So we'll see how Navi places the ball. The ball is definitely in their court. Um, this is this is yet another game that Alliance has given away the Wisp to Navi. We've seen this quite a few times, and. It does force you to play differently, right? Because normally Alliance would be stacking the jungle camps, they'd be maximizing their jungle farm, they'd be stacking the Ancients, and they wouldn't be rotating as three or four. They'd spread out, they'd use their wards and just their, their predictions, uh, and their map movements, their anticipation, to bait Navi into fights and win those fights. But you can't do that against Wisp. If you're just there like, okay, we'll TP and we'll counter gank, no, too late, you're already gonna be dead. Radiant's the tier one bottom, bottom, now denied by Funnick. The Wisp is really forcing Alliance into a less... They're not farming as much as what they want. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the Wisp. The Vol's dropping quite low here too, an ancient sec. Really want to finish it, but... Probably need to pop his ultimate. And just but he's got 4.2k gold. You get yeah. an AC and it won't help you against Radiance Burr, but it will help you kill off the bear and it helps you five man. It really helps you push. Do you think he'll favor the AC here or the BKB? Because there's also a ton of suns and, and nukes coming on the other side. Yeah, it's a tough call. There's a lot of stuff that goes through BKB. We'll just have to see which direction he wants to go. I think AC is a bit better as far as the death ball item. It makes your whole team stronger and... Uh, no, no Reaper. Hard. He's going hard. Yeah, so. Pure tank from Havos. I mean, we saw in that last engagement where they used the last to initiate on him. They didn't even really kill him, so now with the heart, he is really safe on the front line. That's a 21-minute heart on Havos. Oh, that's, that's, that's bad farm. I mean, last game he had like a 10-minute AC and like... 20 minutes the game was over, He's right? probably yeah. very disappointed yeah. in his 21-minute his heart. I'm disappointed, Havos. Havos, though, I, he didn't go for the Midas this game. 
Uh, his farm has been delayed a little bit. Didn't Max Greevel's Greed? Remember as well this farm, he's up against aggressive Trilane early on. So, Havos right now, 2-0-2. Two, two. Weathered the storm. Dendi really blew the lane open with that early relocate. And since then, he's been farming. Now though, set the clock, because Bulldog just got his Radiance. 22 minutes. We've seen him get one at 14 minutes along with the Midas. So it's late by Bulldog standards, but he's got it now. And now he can work towards those next big items. It's game three of a best of five. Whoever wins this is one win away from claiming the Aegis of the Immortal and being the International 2013 champions. Still, though, the game very much in the balance. Again, for the past you know, five, six minutes, we see Navi not really doing too much over the map. Again, the experience slowly uh, dropping down to a line side. Go definitely still going towards a Navi, though, because they're a little bit more efficient. They're farming the Ancient Camp. And they have four towers to two. So they have the tower advantage here. Here comes the smoke, though. They've got Radiance. Navi, will they be caught out? If they five-man smoke gank into you, relocate will be pretty much useless aside from just running. So here comes S4. Fireflight up, him. looking to leave. Is he going to go? He's still prepping. Now they have Moonlight Shadow, but Navi's on the run. The bear losing damage fast. Havos trying to fight. Everybody from Alliance backing off. No engagement yet. Looks oh. like they're just scared to fight. And in the end, they're going to be running. Moonlight Shadow blown. Initiation, smoke gank. Not gonna work, not V, just standing and Alliance run away. It's very, very important for S4 to find a lasso, get a quick kill, and then you move on. Because as a union of five, Navi is very difficult to walk into. They have a, ton, a very, very tanky Alchemist in front line that you cannot ignore because he's doing a ton of damage. And now Navi deciding to go into the Roshan pit. I mean, Firefly is down, but it's back up now. And you got to expect go. him out. Here we go. The bolts being pulled out here. And he, there's nobody helping him out except for Relocate. Can Dendi bring him home? He's not doing anything just yet. The bolts oh. still very tanky. Dendi. Oh, Dendi walks into it. Oh, no. They're now, still raging on. Kuroki to fall. Two dead. Now they're on the run from the backside. Comes Frontic. Laguna Blade as well. That's three for one. Alliance where there's a will, there's a way. Four for two. And haunting a boss. He's going to be a tough kill. But there's your arrow. Loda is sniping them all. Cannot miss. Will not stop. That's a team wipe. Give them five, four, one. And now directly into the Roche pit. Actually five for two. But here we go. That was a huge advantage won here by Alliance. And I mean, it, it just begs the question of Navi going into that Roshan pit despite having Flaming Lasso up on S4. That's just really confident. I mean, to the point of you could even call it cocky. Yeah, and well, they definitely now understand why they can't do that. And now if Roche goes to the Alliance, they have so much more confidence to move around this map. Puppy, he's setting in his familiars. They'll stun, they'll slow this Roche down. But when you have a, a bear that's located. hitting this hard, can they actually go? Keep in mind, they got relocated. Dendi's thinking about relocating in. Roche, Roche, it's low. Roche is low. It's about to fall. Relocate comes. Roche, not dead yet. Aegis to Loda, though. He grabs it. Now Havos trapped in the pit. Bulldog will fall. They lose the bear. They get the Aegis, and they get out with it. So all in all, pretty close there. Slight advantage Dying maybe to Alliance. Tower. Yeah, I know, I know it was tower. really crazy down in that pit. I'm not sure whether, whether it benefits Alliance a little bit more by having Bulldog pick it up, for example. Yeah, you really, I think you really want Bulldog to pick it up, but they do hold on to it. And Loda's going to be a credible damage threat. He's got a Yasha, drums, as well as phase boots. Now he goes towards the Manta or just the next damage item. It doesn't Dying seem like it's tower. actually a lot he's of damage because he's only hitting for like, you know, 125 damage. Keep in mind with the drums activated, with the attack speed that Yasha grants, and of course, Bloodlust. Like, he is going to be hitting quite fast, so there is Dying some legitimate damage tower. coming out from Loda, but here too now goes to Na'Vi as they're securing more and more advantage. But this goal graph and experience graph, it's not really leaning on any team side. Again, Alliance getting more experience is a concern for Na'Vi because this team, they always have to roam as three or four, especially Dendi, right? He's, he's all always sitting with a bolt. That means his experience gain is not going to be too impressive. Alliance has just shown remarkable resilience this game. I mean, you look at the way the game developed. The Lone Druid mid got picked off. The Tri-Lane fell apart. They were forced to abandon it. They were farming a Mirana, not the hardest carry. Na'Vi, early success with tower pushing as well. They once led by, I believe, three or four towers to one. Then it was four to two. Then Alliance finds a huge fight near the Rosham Pit. It's been a topsy-turvy game, but if you want to be a champion, this is how you're going to have to do it, the tough way. Alliance standing strong. Bulldog, now a Hyperstone up, working towards an AC. He's keeping up decently with Havost. I mean, he's not, he's still behind, but Lone Druid, only 3k gold down to a Greed Max is pretty decent. Yeah, it's actually very, very impressive. And 
We'll see how Line 6 this game. Again, they will play keep. They'll keep playing on defensively until uh, they need to react. So far, I still believe that they have the later game. But let's revis revisit that question again. You asked me that earlier. Who does have the better late game? Is it going to be your Marana as well as Admiral Bulldog's uh, Lone Druid, especially with Bloodlust as a, as a big buff? Yeah, I think that's a big thing to mention. Bloodlusting the bear means if it comes down to a base race, you're going to have a huge advantage there. You also have to look at Navi and say, well, it can't just be one fat carry. Because if it's only a Vostu's farm, there is Flamey Lasso on the other side. And if he does get caught by Arrow, by Lasso, if he gets rooted, uh, if there's bashing coming out from the bear, I mean, one fat carry against Disables doesn't matter how many items he has. So this is where they want Funnick to get items. Funnick, however, is a bit poor. 7k net worth. Razor, one of his weaknesses is he's not the greatest Flash Farmer. He's he got a uh, Mithril Hammer, so... He'll have a BKB soon, but Razor... Uh, he tends to fall off in the late game. He can be a nuisance if he gets the Axe, the Refresher. Uh, he's a great pusher in his own right, but can he keep up to me? That's the big question. Yeah, I think right now going with the BKB is not too poor of a choice. Like, he could just pop the BKB, run towards Alina, run towards the Ogre Magi, and basically zone them out because there's no way that these two support can handle him. In fact, he could do that against the, the, the Marana as well, but eventually there comes a stage where you just cannot ignore the bear that's mauling on you. You cannot ignore the damage that's coming out from Marana. So eventually, I think the Razor is going to fall off. But for now, he's, he's definitely king. Yeah, Marana has the big mobility advantage over Razor in fights. Bloodlust, phase, drums build, now Manta. Alota can find anyone who's alone and kill them, and he can run really effectively. So if he doesn't die to burst, he's going to be around on the fights. Razor, not very mobile, can be caught for the most part, doesn't have access to leap, doesn't have bloodlust on his side. Sure, he's got his passive, but uh, Alliance has the more reliable lockdown here. So they'll take a tier one top. The Alliance answer back. Nine to seven the score. Navi going for a tier two bottom. It looks like Alliance will try and turn two. Glyphs down. Tower falling fast. Navi, tier two bottom to fall. It's a trade from both teams. Nobody fighting. I think don't Alliance, base trade. No, no, they've got bloodlust here. Yeah, I don't, don't. Nobby cannot go for this. You cannot base trade. In fact, it's not really even trade. They trade at a tier. Glyph. This tower might just die yes. before they get back. Like they, you, uh, you cannot base. Look at this bear with the bloodlust. Tier three is gonna go down for free. Tower's gonna fall. Now they're just gonna back off. Havos launching a stun. Does hit Bulldog. Four staffed away. Now Moonlight Shadow. Is there a gem? There is on Havos, but Navi forced to back off. They can't trade like that. They just can't. They, not yeah. against the they, not they, against the blood. Bear. They did not respect the power of a Radiance, Bloodlust Bear. I mean, they got a tier 2, which is nice, but they gave up three towers on the top lane for it. I mean, if you look at this gold graph, well, we haven't registered yet, but it will be a spike downwards. Yeah, right now it's basically just like a 3k gold difference for these teams. And again, that's Dyer's where having a gold advantage attack. that comes from tower gold is easily recovered if you can push them down. So Alliance now coming back. They've got a haste rune up on S4. And now Loda can work on his next item. We don't see too much Marana Lumi, and generally she's not thought of as a hard carry. She doesn't have a steroid skill aside from Leap, which gives her a little bit of move speed and attack speed, not a whole lot, but she's a very mobile carry, and if she gets enough items, she is an agility hero. She can pack a punch. Yeah, she doesn't really get there very quickly. She needs like two, three, sometimes even four items to start dealing out you know, very respectable, respectable damage, but as an early game semi-carry, she gives a ton of utility. We saw the random arrow that hit Dendi when he tethered in uh, during a team fight. We've seen great usage of Moonlight Shadow so far. So Loda is not really a big deal just yet, but he definitely will grow into uh, a carry that you cannot ignore. He's a living legend, he just hasn't revealed it yet, yeah. so we're gonna see his big deal come out soon. And now, I just gotta say, I gotta take my hat off to Alliance right now, no matter how this game turns out, because a lesser team just would have broken after the way that tri lane went, after Bulldog dying mid. This is resilience at its finest. It's patience from them. Now Navi farming a stack of Ancients. They're going to try and get Havos even fatter. He is still ahead by about 3.5k gold. He's still leading that lone druid. He continues to farm. The other heroes are somewhat struggling. There's a mech up on Puppy. That's about it. Kuroki, it's 31 minutes in. And how often do we see him not having Blink Force, not having more move mobility items on his Rubik? But he does not this game. He's just not getting the farm. It's all Havost. And normally with Navi, I feel like it's a more balanced split than this. Yeah, it's a little bit of everybody. Meanwhile, S4, he's thinking about jump. He's got the haste rune, so here he goes. He's scouting oh, over this everybody. This could be a disaster if Navi get caught. But they're in the enemy jungle. There's no dire vision of this. Not going to be an easy engage. And now it's that dance before Roche respawns. It's just good positioning from the Alliance. Loda tucked away to the right. If he gets relocated on, it's lo it, I mean, basically, it's a big bait right here. Right. They want them to go on Loda, and then they'll all turn it around. But Navi not taking the bait. I mean, speaking of relocate, when have, when, when's the last time we've seen it? If you go like 
five, ten minutes without using a single real. Last time it was during the Roshan fight, right? That's that's when we saw it last. That was six, seven minutes ago. If Alliance is dodging relocate ganks for six, seven minutes, you have done well. Support again, always hiding in fog, and nobody exposing themselves to the danger of that wisp. And look at this. They're just gonna keep on taking trades because they have the the lone droid bear, which hits like a truck. The tier two bottom's gonna fall. Now they have to defend mid, but S4, he's got a blink force. He's got a lasso as well. Dendi will be essential to keep him safe. The tier three mid falls. There's no glyph available. In comes the bear. They're looking for a root on a boast. The bear's damage being stolen. S4 leaps in, grabs Funic, but can't kill him off. He's low, he's not dead. No damage to bring him down. BKB from Funic. Navi standing strong, but they lose him. Loda snipes the kill. The bear's dead, soon to be resummoned. Puppy falling fast. Loda with a DD. Blinking, he's starting to hurt. That's two down. The Alliance not dead, turning it around. Havos in trouble. Chain stun city, but he gets the two arrow stun. He's gonna turn it back the other way. A boss right clicking for us. Look, he's gonna get EGM as well. That's a triple kill, but Aggie says skill cast. Team me. wipe for Alliance. They completely win the fight. How often do we see Havos get a triple kill on the other side, and it's Alliance winning it back? How many buybacks were used that team fight? Was just so just chaotic. Two buybacks from the Alliance, so they lost three, but they got five, and the Alliance right now can barrel down the middle lane, will be able to take a tier two, they'll set up for the next Roche. Their position on this map, on the back of that fight, just got a whole lot stronger. And I gotta say, man, Loda, these DD runs coming at just the right moment. And you can see, you kill the bear once, you focus the Lundra bear, that's great. Bulldog resummons it, and he goes right back to work. Yeah, you gotta kill the actual bear back in the mid lane here. S4 gets dragged, and Funic, he's gonna get blown up. No BKB being activated. The familiar drops a little bit too slow, and with two Three heroes still dead. I think they're gonna try their uh, high ground look. Yeah, there's no relocate right now. It is cooling down very soon. I do want to mention Kuroki stole Lasso, but doesn't have a Blink Dagger or a Force Staff, so can he actually use it? That'll be a lot tougher. Now it gets hit by an arrow. Uh oh, here comes the bear. No, they no. Want the tower. Look they at just this want tower. The tower. Look at it melt. Now Glyph Force out again. You know, Navi. Ooh, they a whole self sun. Navi keep on having to use Glyph just for these casual pushes. Like, Alliance aren't even committing to a fight, and Navi have to Glyph for that. So if they lose another fight, that, I mean, that, sh that could just be Rax and maybe even game on okay. one bad fight. Basher's coming now, so if you think you could run away from this bear, I mean... Arrow to fly, completely off the mark, but... Yeah, the bear, one good Basher on Havost, and he's probably dead. I mean, again, Basher, it's a very standard item, but we have not seen Basher with Bloodlust. Like, this guy's attack speed is just so far off the chart that... What do you do? I, I, I guess the best thing to do is to f focus and finish Admiral Bulldog, but so far Navi has not been making that play because you cannot ignore Marana. You cannot ignore the two support that could, in theory, blow you up with things like Laguna Blade and a multicast. So right now Navi has a ton of stuff to worry about and not nearly enough DPS to actually get the, all those kills. Navi, though, they did take a tier 3 mid. They defend their base for now. So in terms of the tier 3s were even, the tier 2s were even. Gold experience really close. 7.5k gold. This is really a slugfest. The analyst wanted a closer game, and we're getting one. And here we go. A boast on the front line. They found Aki, but they relocated forward. Kind of wasted, but they will get the kill. Not really ideal. Now Aki just says, okay, I'm buying back. Lasso, though, stolen by Kuroki. A find S4. S4's dead. Now they relocate a few steps away. Dendi's low. Dendi's not dead. And Havos is on the hunt. No. Stunned. Isolated. Can't finish the job. Bulldog cleaning up on the backside. He's not been focused yet. And now he might find Funny. Where's that bear going to go? Nothing just yet. Now Ooh, he's Admiral, on the run. Admiral in oh, trouble. There's a haste on Dendi. Uh-oh, Lumi. Uh-oh. Bear's going to drop. He's got to resummon. Are they going to fight? No. Another bear death. More gold into Navi's pocket. Uh, Navi's gonna gotta try to get something done right now. Gotta focus that Rex. Bat Rider dead for about 20 seconds. S4, does he have buyback? No buyback. Yes, he does. No, yes, he already he, used no, no, it. No, no, use it. Cool already yes. used it. Cannot buy back. There's no glyph here either. It's all up to the bear. And if the bear dies, it's dead for a good minute and a half. But an arrow nails him both. Where's the bow up? There's a Dendi relocate soon, and he just can't really be damaged here. That overcharge starting to kick in. And oh, in the Bash. end. Roots. Oh my god. Funix just gonna melt. Here comes S4. He finds Havos. Havos is gonna get focused as well. Dendi does not get the relocate out. They want more. The arrow. Oh no, it does not hit. S4 
Four says, I'll clean up, no problem. And that's yet another base offense. This Rax is just immortal for Alliance. Sweden's finest are standing strong. The Alliance, 17 to 14, leading in gold. Lee experienced now heavily their way, gold even. But this Roche will break the game open. Alliance, now we're going to see Loda. Another damage item. The MKB's on the way. And this game, it does start to feel like if Alliance gets a lasso, Navi just can't fight. Alliance seem to be gaining momentum, seizing control of this game. Aegis, this time, no, it's on to Loda again. And one step closer they are. One more good fight, and Alliance could easily win. Alliance thinking about setting up shop on the mid lane, maybe starting that stage. Kuroki picks up a very important item. We saw what he did without the blink on it, using a flaming lasso against S4. That was a beautiful play, but let's see what he could do for his team, because his team definitely needs him right now. He needs to make some huge plays. 37 minutes in, it's very, been a very back and forth game. Nobody with a clear edge, but Alliance gaining steam, looking for a pick. One good lasso could just spell doom. There's only buyback on Havost and Funnick. In comes Havost, looking for a stun. It's gonna hit, but it's very far away. S4, not an easy target now. Still chasing, Zero. arrow to fly. Loda nails it again. Where's that lasso? Baiting out the BKB. Havost slapping and choppy, but not finishing a hero off. And now his BKB ends. He's on his own. Lassoed and pulled back into four, but tethered up. It's up to the bear. He's got himself stunned. Oh no, Havost is gonna fall. Oh no, Havos getting caught out. Now Dendi being chased as well. They're not going to get the kill. Just a buyback coming out from Host. Dendi, Tedra's backward here. We'll reset and reload here, but Alliance getting every advantage They right just now. forced out a double buyback for absolutely nothing. Didn't lose their Aegis, did not use a buyback on their own. That is so big. And I mean, there's no Aegis on the Amber Bulldog. They're absolutely confident that he is not going to die. Every time that Havos is diving in, going for kill, it's Amber Bulldog that finds the kill faster because his bear is attacking faster. He's chasing a lot more effectively with things like Face Food and Bloodlust. This is why you do not give Amber Bulldog his lone drip because it's just amazing. Like, how, how do you stop this guy? He always finds a way. And I mean, it goes back to the Ochre Magi of Ake as well. The blood, without Bloodlust, I think this bear could be dealt with. But with mm -hmm. it, it's just too much right now. It's a max blood loss. 16% move speed, 50% attack speed on a hero that's got very low base attack time. He hits really hard, really fast. And now Loda close to an MKB. Already we see a BKB coming out for us four. There is only one way to cancel a lasso initiation. That is to steal the lasso and use it the other way or get a very lucky bash. And Havos does not have a basher, so Navi smoke up. They're heading to the top lane, looking for a pick but maybe not expecting Loda. Throws out the arrow, hits Kuroki. Do they jump this? This is dangerous. They didn't see a hero. They just saw the stun. Now a sentry deployed. Still diving. Havos, long range stun. EGM gets caught. He forces up. He's on the high ground. He's gonna fall, but I think it might be too late. S4 held in position. No BKP. Now EGM TP's out. He survives. Wow, actually there was a BKP and S4 is gonna live. Na'Vi, they force something out, another arrow, another one, he keeps on fishing. Sooner or later, you're gonna get a bite. Yeah, Na'Vi just have to back off right now, they use both their BKBs, theirs is on cooldown, Mewa, nobody's actually dead on Alliance, and of course they have their BKBs available, so, or they have their spells available, excuse me. And Alliance now, looking for something themselves, S4, smoked, he wasted. He didn't use Lasso there, so keep that in mind. Yeah. If they find someone, they're gonna go, and Na'Vi, very confidently, We'll head in. They do have an Observer Ward here, but right now, Alliance are smoked, no sentries up on the map, and we might just see a pick. In comes S4, wrapping around towards mid. Navi scurrying to retreat. kroki has got blink, but no, it's too late. They found a boast, the worst hero they ever could die. Relocate back here, and they want to bring Funnick back in the fight. Double damage on Dendi, let's see how much you do. Zap, and Lina's dead, and now they're going to go for Aki. Arrow's going to miss. They find Aki. Aki just melt. Gank the bear. Don't let the bear go. He's running fast, he's running hard, and nobody could chase it down. Havos, blink, and there's a recall. That bear is amazing. No buyback here on Ogre, no buyback on Lena. Is there a glyph? Alliance does have one. They're gonna need to blow it now. They might have to forfeit this Rax. They're strong, but I don't think they're 3v5 strong. Glyph is out. Havos, he'll keep on swiping. They're gonna lose a lane of Rax here. They'll have to decide if they want to contest. It's not an easy go. S4, he wasn't sure. He didn't jump yet. He gets lifted. Chain stunned and brought down. Now Funnick, Duke 
taking it out. Havos smacking the bear, but it's living. It's winning the fight. Loda, MKB up, standing and delivering. They get the Rex, they lose a Razor, and they get a bat as well. Navi, big win for them there, but their work is not done yet. Definitely not that Navi will make the retreat, but huge plays, huge plays from Navi, because if they didn't get that, that, that Rex, they were, they were not going to win this game. They, had, they needed that Rex. The crowd now cheering for Navi. 17 to 20 your score. 42 minutes in. Gold experience. Heavily in Alliance's favor, sure, but we're at a point in the game where that experience starts to trail off in terms of how much it matters. Everyone's got their level 11. 16 still elusive for a few, but now items, gold, they matter less. Positioning, buybacks, Roshan matter more. Roshan, five minutes off coming up. Loda, he's still got Aegis here, but the other big thing about that fight for Na'Vi is the timing window to use Aegis to win a fight and take Rex off of it, well, it's about to close because the Aegis is about to expire. I think there's one minute to go. Well, here they come. They could storm down the mid lane, definitely, but they're going to have to do it with basically huge trade waves. They really have to stay together, though, because you're up against Wisp. If they're off on their own, if they spread out, then relocate will just ruin you in these fights. Right. I, I don't think they will make the push. In fact, they want to get a gank team fight up top here. Of course, with Moonlight Shadow, you definitely have the element of surprise on your favorite on your hand, but smoked up here from Na'Vi. They Arrow to go for fly. Pick. Not sure where it is right now. It looks like Na'Vi coming in. Havos channeling a stun. We'll see the bear, but he wants a hero. Relocate as well. Nope. Lasso's gonna be there. They for find now. S4. S4. No. BKB. He gets caught yet again. The stun's there. Loda. Age is soon to expire. No Manta driven back. No buyback on the Batrider. Very far away. Is this two lanes of Rax, Lumi? Could this even be game? I don't know, man. It's mid, be... mid lane is pushing, though. Let's quickly check on buyback status. There is no, no buyback, buyback no on buyback. anybody. Oh, this this could be game. There's there's no glyph here. I mean, this Alliance are gonna have to find. They're gonna have to really muster their courage. They have to find a good fight. It's tough. Remember, Havosta's overcharge. This ain't your average alchemist. This is a very buff one. And then they go hard to kill. Kuroki with the blink, the lift. Ake caught. Navi finding the pickoffs. This could be game. Two lanes of Rex soon to fall. Loda though driving the back. Star falls there. Something stolen. The bear man fighting out with the boast. Loda locked in position. Does not give two hosts. Then the arrow comes. Another play again. Kuroki just connecting. Lina melts, the Rax melts, Loda trying his best to hold off whatever he can, but Hovos just does not care on the front line. That second lane of Rax, S4 is back, and I think that's time to get the hell out for Navi. They got exactly what they wanted. Hovos says, no, I want more. I'm going to just storm down, get the mid Rax. Give me a range Rax as well. If you're not buying back, you must not have it, he says. And in they go. Kuroki, another leap. This time a BKB from S4, but he's not using it to fight. Now, they grab Loda. He gets four staffed into the Frey, lift it up, drop down and dead. Loda has fallen and the Swedes are in a headlong state of disarray. Navi on the brink of being one game away from taking the entire tournament. Can they make a safe retreat? That's a big question right now. S4, big chase, but if you see the Navi S5, they're rotating, they're moving bot. They don't want to chase, they don't want to go back. They just want to win the game right now. They're about 48 seconds without buyback on Loda. This is a go time. Remember, if Navi do die, they've got a buyback relocate available. So, they really have seven heroes here. They really do have an Aegis in this fight. And then they go. It could be three lanes of Rex. It could very well be game. Alliance might be trailing for the first time ever in this series. Here we go. Funnick falling fast. The tether stuns there. Test four. Lassoing Funnick. Funnick will fall. But EGM's been caught. And EGM is dead. Havos is merciless. That's three lanes of Rex. That's probably game. He's got the buyback, he's still alive, and Alliance are on their very last legs. Then the overcharging, blocking damage, earning himself. Hobos is immortal. They disarm, and they're gonna keep on rifling. Hobos still alive. How is this man alive? Finally, he'll die, but he buys back. Dendi will too. They're coming right back in. Actually, no relocate. They do lose a few. They lose four, but that's Mega Creeps. And Alliance now, good luck leaving your base. Not B pulling this game out of the hat. It felt like the momentum was tipping against them, but they found the fight. They found the pickoffs, and all of a sudden, 
this is their game. Alliance has one minute to prove himself. They have to just storm down the mid lane and go for the throne right now because they will not win extend the game. You can see the entire team is just trying to A collect down mid. Let's see if they can do it. Remember they do have the bear. Remember they do have extra attack speed on him. Remember how hard Demolish hits. If Navi screw up here, they did use a buyback on a Vost. If somehow he dies, if they mess up this defense, it could very well it's go the other way. It's, but it's, here, com here comes. This is the last fight for Alliance. It's going to be really hard. The one thing that we have not talked about at all is that Dendi's got a Heaven's Halberd. That is disarm against the bear when you rely so much on a single target, deal that damage, and obviously... And a Divine. Oh, They're here going we go. For it. I love go. it. Alliance showing some real cojones in this match. They've got to win this fight. Loda has a DD as well. This bear will absolutely murder anything. Bears win games. Will it win this one? There's a glyph on Navi. There's a buyback on the Wisp. Arrow not going to accomplish anything. In comes the bear. In comes S4. He's found Funnick. In comes the as well. Disarm against the bear. He's not doing anything. Funnick survived the initiation. Hobo the says, bear. I want the, the bear. Rapier. I want your Aegis. Thank you very much. The Divine Rapier is now on Funnick, and Na'Vi are going to cut Alliance's head up down the middle lane. GG! They started this series off 0-1. They started this series off looking like they had no idea what they were doing, and yet here they are, leading 2-1. The defending International 1 champions fell short last year, but this year it might be their chance to return to their former glory. Do we count on Navi, or do we say 3-2 Navi? Are they making a comeback, or will Alliance We'll find out. Pocket. And on that note, we throw it back to the analysts. Guys, Navi's close. They can taste it. Navi then on match point, guys. It's pretty intense in terms of I don't know how Alliance held on so long after their offensive tri lane. I have to say, that offensive tri lane in terms of um, the Marana, Ogre Magi, and Lino is designed to get picks and kill and be aggressive. But you can't do anything against an alchemist that has a Rubik and a Visage sat behind. And I almost felt it maybe was a mistake to even um, offensively ward the pulling spot because you almost wanted Na'Vi to pull so they would separate it. And from there, the whole game was on the bear and the bat for Alliance. I, I definitely agree. I'm surprised they, as you were saying, held on for, th for this long. But every fight just turned out in Alliance's favor up until the fact or the point where Navi pushed in and took the middle Raxus. Here we see the fight at the top tower and or the top Raxus and Havos is just going at it. Look at how much damage it, t it takes from them. When they go for the last set of Raxus on the bottom lane, he just tanks three heroes without even losing HP because of that Wisp. It's just ridiculous how much he can tank at the end, and maybe they should start considering banning out the Alchemist against him, because he's, he seems way too strong for them to handle. I mean, Alchemist is already a strong hero, and combine that with a Wisp, we haven't really seen it that often, because Wisp is typically banned, but this is the big bad of both, and he was unstoppable. I thought there were three key points that Alliance actually got a pretty good lead, is one was a Roshan fight where... Uh, S4 the, came in. Yeah, S4 came in, dragged Alchemist like up the hill, they had no way to save him. Even though he had a heart, he... Uh, just com was completely out of position there and that is one of the strengths of Bat Rider. Also, Havos going heart first, I wasn't completely sold on idea. I think AC may have been a better choice. I thought that Alliance uh, took a couple of team fights that they shouldn't have um, because of that heart. And then the, the trade on the top lane, they had a. Alliance actually got the T3 tower and it was just a T2 trade. They got a T2 and a T3 for a T2. And I thought they could have pressured that because Alliance is just so good at split pushing. I thought they could try and avoid fights, but with the mobility of Wisp yeah. and with Havos just being ridiculously strong. I actually think the heart was a great item choice simply because the way to bring him down was through Ogre and Lina combos. And if he just had the HP to survive their spell combo, there was no way they could bring him down because Potom didn't really do much damage at the time being. So the heart was just a, a, an overall great item choice. We saw them trying to gank him on the top rune. Uh, at the ancient spot, and they didn't deal any damage to him whatsoever. And Lina and Ogre died, and they just pushed yeah. on middle lane and instead. I mean, normally with a heart, you don't consider the alchemist to have very much effective HP out of it just because of how low armor. But the heart was done and just like literally 
straight after you had a plate melt. So in terms, yeah, I, I think it actually kind of did work out in a way for him that that hard pickup. Uh, Bruno, what did you make of the match? Well, this is not the first time Alliance tried to run this um, Ogre Magi and Londruid combo. It actually works very well for them in general. They are 6-1 and one before this game, now they're 6-2. and two. The whole idea of this lineup is, of course, trying to get overpowered when it gets to late game, and that bear becomes super threatening because all of your racks is melt immediately. Now, one of the reasons why maybe it didn't work, it was not because of the bear in particular. It was the bat rider, man. The bat rider. Every okay, okay, you do it. No, no, please. No, 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 no please. As please, far please. as I could tell, there was too much pressure on S4 to actually get the picks. You saw when he got a good pick, they got a kill over by Roshan, and after that, Fa um, uh, Kurakai was picking him up if he had the potential chance. But it was also the Wisp Tether stun. There were a few times when that S4 went in and just couldn't pull what he wanted, or he got picked off, and him getting picked off twice, I think it was, twice in a row. Maybe that kind of led Na'Vi to be able to get the racks. But Bruno, you can prove me wrong. Uh, no, this no, is, no, this no, is no, my no, no, it's, it's perfect because you were to that and you served it perfectly to me. Um, this is strategy of the Long Druid and um, Ogre Magi. Actually, it's a very good strategy. It's been tried 19 times and it has a 58% win rate, which is more than acceptable. But when it's played with the Bad Rider, 0%. It's 0-4. It never works for some reason. Maybe it's all about the bad rider being pressure. Maybe it's just coincidence. But I think you're perfectly right when you said used all the pressure on this guy. And there's also, no, let's not forget about not the primary carries of the game, which were the Long Druid and the Alchemist, but also Fanic on the Mirana. And, uh, sorry, Fanic on the Razor and Loda on the Mirana. Because Loda at this time was not playing the main carry. He was a uh, secondary role. And these two guys, they had some responsibility as well. They had to, Mirana had to land their arrows and uh, Fanic had to make sure that the life, um, sorry, the static link work perfectly so that at least the druid becomes a non-factor or someone on the other team becomes a non-factor. I think the different performance of these two heroes made the difference in the end because Racer just got a little bit more than what Loda could get in the Mirana. Yeah. And also, if you look at Loda's start in that um, tri-lane, no farm whatsoever. There was no farm available. Um, Havos was playing amazing. He just you know, deny-wise and just kept him out of the lane and the Ogre Magi and Lina just didn't really know what to do. And the trouble is when you've got those two heroes, Ogre Magi and Lina, in an offensive tri-lane, how do you rotate without being obvious? You can't, you can't smoke and go to mid. It's like, well, they're mid.